Our good friend joins us. Aaron, it's Michael and Don. How you doing? What's up, fellas? Just wanted to check in on this one thing. Uh, yesterday, David Robertson had an awful ninth inning. He comes off the mound, they boo him. So right. I'm sure you haven't, weren't booed a lot in your career, but when you were, does it affect a player? Do they hear it? Does it bother them? Does it motivate them? Does it have any effect on a player at all? Well, first off, I'll say I think everyone's a little bit different. Uh, I mean, I think you can go the route of Barry Bonds, and I'm sure certain people probably thrived on it, and it, and it made them better. Now, I, I should preface this by saying with the last name of Boone, I was <laughs> never booed in my entire career. That's right, like Lou Pinella. <laughs> That's right. No, but, but funny how you know when it's, it's a Boone or it's a boo. So... I'd say on some level it has an effect. I remember being in Cincinnati once where, you know, I had my best years and I was in a tough tough start to the season for about a month and a half where I was hearing some a little bit and I remember hitting a game-winning home run and, and being like a little defiant, like a little bit bad almost, like, yeah, take that. So, you know, but to say I think the vast majority of players, does it affect them, does it eat at them? I don't think so. It didn't me. I mean, it can it can rub you the wrong way or irk you, but I don't think it. I don't think it drags you down. The vast majority of guys. Now we were just going over chapter and verse all the games the Yankees have played lately, Aaron, and they don't hit, but they're in every game that they play. They don't blow anybody out. They don't get blown out. So it seems like everything after the seventh inning is is so meaningful, and every out is just so important. Every at bat. Uh, well, how does that wear down a team mentally to just never even get that one breather where, hey, guys, we're, we're in the eighth inning, we're up five runs, we can relax a little bit? Yeah, I don't think there's any question that that adds to the grind of the season. You know, when you don't have those games where it's – and it does seem like with the Yankees lately it has been that way where everything is – you know, so much is on the line, especially when you consider at this time of the year where they're fighting for a playoff, uh, you know, spot – I, no question. I think it can add to some of the grind of the season. Now, you're out um, in Anaheim today. Are you doing the Red Sox and the Angels? Is that it? In Boston, yeah. In Boston, okay, on ESPN. And yep. the Angels, on the, on the heels of the, the athletics, really starting to lose a lot, they've taken over in the American League West. I mean, how pumped is that team, and what do you think is wrong with the A's? I think the A's have just hit a little bump in the road. Um, I think... You know, overall, I still feel like they're the best team just because of their starting pitching is so good. But the Angels have, you know, what's been arguably the best bullpen in the game or one of the best few bullpens in the game, and that's really been their recipe for success. They've got the best player, obviously, in Mike Trout. Um, but it's a team that, since the All-Star break, hasn't hit a ton, not like they have most of the year anyway, but they've been getting pretty good solid starting pitching and a lights-out bullpen. And... And, and couple that with the fact that the A's have hit, hit a little bump in the road, really one of their first of the year, and it's tightened things up big time in the West. Now, I had read over the weekend that Josh Hamilton had asked Mike Sosha he needed a couple of mental days. I can imagine what Leo DeRosha would have said if somebody asked him for that, but what's the situation there? Well, they're just trying to get him going, and they feel like, you know, with some of the moving parts of his swing, it's a very rhythmic uh, swing. They just really want to get him on the right track. So I think it was one day where he said, you know, I need the mental break, and then Sosha kind of turned it into two days by Sosha's doing, just saying, hey, I want you to come in and really work. But they feel like it's it's not so much physical as it is him just getting the timing and the rhythm back to the swing. And they still feel like there's a run in there where he can be a great player, and they're hoping to get that here as they fight for a playoff spot, fight for the West. Aaron, back to the A's for a second. I mean, there's no coincidence. They've taken a nosedive since making all these deals, and yeah. this was a team that was riding high. So did Billy Bean maybe disrupt the chemistry of this team, even though he meant to do the best for the team? I'm just wondering, right. did they really disrupt some good chemistry there? Oh, man. Uh, I guess we'll find out. I don't think so. You know, I, I think you add Jeff Samarja, you add... John Lester to your rotation. I have a hard time believing that's going to mess with your chemistry other than in a good way. Um, and I think those moves still over time will allow them to claim the West and be a viable World Series contender. Now, there's no question, though, in gaining those players and Lester, 
they had to give up Joanna Cespedes, who's an important part of their team. But, you know, for as good a player as Cespedes is and as important as he's been, you know, he's still been a guy the last two years that's got on base at less than a 300 clip. So it's not like, you know, they didn't trade Mike Trout here. Um, but there's no question the offense has taken a little bit of a step back. And I think they do miss Cespedes, but I think over time I still think there will be moves that pay off for the A's. It is interesting, though, because we saw with the Indiana Pacers, when you trade a big name out of your team, even if you think you're going to get the team better, sometimes it backfires. And I was talking to Buck Showalter last week. I said, why does chemistry matter in baseball? You add guys together, they go up, they're trying to get hits. And he looked at me like I had three heads. He said, you got to have the right mix in that, in that clubhouse. you got to have people that get along and want to want to do things for each other. He said, chemistry is really, really important. And when you make a trade, sometimes you're upsetting it. Do you agree? I probably not to the extreme you just spoke of it, but there's no question. I think it can be one of the ingredients that make helps make a team successful, or that can tear a team down because it is an everyday game, and you know you're playing every day. You're with guys more than any other sport, probably, and you know the energy drawn from good chemistry. I feel like some of the good teams I've been on has been an asset. So. I, you know, I don't think it's the end-all, be-all or so, so important, but I absolutely feel like it's a factor.